I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand basic concept about Rolle's theorem. Let me roll the ball and we will take a very simple example. Let us consider that this is a playing field where we kick a ball at this position. So the ball will go kind of like this and then return to the ground. Right. So that is the trajectory which a ball is going to follow. Let us consider that this point is A and this point is B where the ball lands. What you notice is that the height of the ball, let us say, uh, let me call this as height H and let us say this is time T. So what we notice here is that the height of the ball at A is 0. So that is uh, we can say h of a equals to 0 and height of the ball at b is also 0. So height of the ball at b is also 0, right. Now you also see that the path followed by the ball is continuous, right. In between we do have a point where the tangent to the slope is 0. So this point, we are calling this point as, let us say, C. So we do have a point here where we have horizontal slope on this trajectory. So which in derivative sense, we say, because H is our function, we'll say H dash and T is the independent variable equals to 0 at t equals to c, right? So that is what you will notice. Every time you kick the ball from anywhere on the ground, it is going to land on the ground and somewhere in between it is going to turn and at that turning point, the speed will be 0 for the ball, right? That's an application. And at turning point, if you are considering the path or trajectory of the ball, tangent will be zero, right? So in short, that gives you the scenario for Rolle's theorem, right? Now let's look into the definition of the theorem and then we'll try to understand it further. Let f be a function that satisfies following three properties. So we took height as our function where time was independent value. So it says let f be a function that satisfies following three properties. First, f is continuous on the closed interval a and b. That means including a and including b, right? f is differentiable on the open interval a and b. So this bracket means open interval, not including a, not including b, in between a and b. Three is that the value of function at a is equals to value of function at b. That is f of a equals to f of b. Then there is a number c in open interval a and b such that f dash c is zero. So f dash c basically means that is the slope, right? Derivative, right? So this is derivative or which represents the slope, right, of tangent. Zero means horizontal. Is it okay? Horizontal. So likewise, you can understand this theorem now. So these are important parameters. Now, let's understand point two, which is f is differentiable on the interval, open interval, a and b. Differentiable means it is a smooth curve. That means without cusp or corners, right? So that is what we mean when we say f is differentiable on the open interval a and b, right? So I hope the definition is very clear. Now there could be different scenarios and in this video uh, we can take a few scenarios. So there could be, uh, let me make some diagrams here. Okay, what kind of scenarios could be there? So I'll just sketch a few simple graphs to show you 
what are different scenarios where this fits in. Okay, so when we say f a equals to f b, that basically means that the y values are same, right? So, so we are considering. I'm just drawing a horizontal line to represent uh, not a tangent, okay, <laughs> uh, or not a horizontal asymptote, but just to uh, find two points, right? So we will consider two points. We'll say A and B are my two points, A and B, right? Uh, A and B are two points. Okay, so four different graphs I will create to illustrate. So when we say that f is continuous on closed interval a and b that means from a to b i'm going to draw a curve without any cusp and corner and without lifting my pen so it becomes continuous and differentiable correct f a equals to f p means if i start from one value then i have to end at the same value and that is why i've drawn my guideline right so this is that value. So we are saying this value is F A. Okay. Uh, this could be F B also. Both are same. Correct. That's what we are trying to say. Correct. So let me give you a few examples which will illustrate. Now one we could have a constant function that is starting from A to B. We just draw a straight line. Right. So that is a constant function. So one example could be f of x equals to let us say 5 so in this case f of a equals to f of b equals to 5 is it okay and how many c's do we have where derivative is 0 think about it we'll get back to this okay other we could have a and b we have to connect these two points we could connect kind of uh, like this first going up and then down right and we could do something like this also we can go down and something like this also right okay or uh, we could do we can we can go up we can go down and then we can come back right so this is how there are different ways we can do it now in each case you find that this condition is satisfied f a equals to f b since we have a smooth curve we have satisfied that within the open interval, the function is differentiable. Since we did not lift our pen, we know this is continuous in this closed interval A and B, right? Now we get back to the most important part, that is, what does the theorem say? It says, then there is a number C in A and B, open interval, such that the derivative at c for the function is 0. f dash c is 0. That means we have a horizontal tangent somewhere in between. As you can see, this is a constant function. So we have infinite number of c's, right? So it would be c1, c2, like cn, where n approaches, right? Every point. Because the derivative of this function is 0, right? The derivative is 0. Okay. In this particular case, we find one point which happens to be the turning point. Is it okay? So this is C for us where F dash C is equal to 0. So there is definitely 1. In this case, we can see two points. Do you see that? So we call them C1 and C2. And they are within the interval A and B. Here also we have two points. We could have more also. Right, so C1 and C2. So these are the points where the derivative is 0 or we have a horizontal tangent, correct? Let me also give you examples which do not satisfy this particular criteria, right? For example, if I have, uh, let us say, let me sketch one and then you will understand what I'm trying to say, right? So let's say something like this. Okay, now what do you notice here? Let's say we have two points A and B. Well, let me draw a horizontal line to indicate that they have same value, right? So these two points, A and B, we have <coughs> F of A equals to F of B, correct? 
and in between we do not have horizontal tangent there is no C in between where there is any horizontal what we see here is that F dash of C is never equal to 0 is that okay is never equal to 0 in this particular case since this is a this is not a smooth curve you see that so 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 this is not a smooth curve so here we cannot apply Rolle's theorem. So we say that Rolle's theorem is not valid. Why? Because the function is not differentiable in the open interval a and b, right? Since, since, let's say f of x, since f of x is not differentiable. in open interval a and b do you get the idea right so if it is not differentiable then we'll not have this condition this is important to understand so so whenever you're sketching you have to sketch without lifting your pen ensuring a continuous graph a smooth curve ensuring that's a continuous function then there will be a point c in the open interval a and b where f dash c will be equal to zero. So I hope the concept is clear. Now we will take a few more examples to illustrate the point. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.